Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah. Welcome back everyone, this is Fresh Pear returning for another humble Back to Basics performance review. We've seen Jimmy Butler rock pairs of the Jordan Ultrafly on the court during the last several games of the NBA season. Too bad Chi Town didn't make the cut for the playoffs, but setting that aside, I was finally able to play in a pair for 6 days or a total of 16 hours of full court games on different types of courts. Just a small favor before we proceed, please hit the thumbs up button for this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. More reviews are coming so keep it locked in. Also, you may follow me on Instagram, that's where I am most of the time. Do hit my website as well for the detailed version of this review, complete with explanations and all that jazz. All the links are in the description box below, so do check them out. With that out of the way, let's get it. On to the review. The upper is a single piece material that consists of a cream overlay sitting atop a dual layer of really thin mesh. In a nutshell, cream is molded polyurethane, almost like rubber but is still plastic. Here we have a pretty standard lacing system. Rope laces go through 7 eyelets, 6 of which are aligned along the modified U-throat lining, reinforced with TPU backing, and the last one is placed at the ankle area. The throat and tongue are meshed with thin foam. There are foam pads as well in the heel and ankle. This also has an internal plastic heel counter that is about two-thirds of the height of the heel. The midsole is lightweight, full-length phylon. Now working in tandem with the phylon midsole is a four-foot zoom unit that has nine small chambers and they partially protrude. The spaces between the chambers also double as flex grooves. The shoe features a semi-translucent rubber, not solid rubber, contrary to Nike's description. The outsole pattern is wave-like and the treads are thin, pliable and have minimal spacing between them. In case you were wondering, the Kurim overlay looks pretty durable. The Kurim in my pair is still intact. No color fading, no scratches or significant scuff marks. But remember, this is only after 6 days of full court game, so take that with a grain of salt. The traction will be either good or bad depending on the court. If you play on really dusty courts, whether hardwood or smooth concrete, you will be sliding. The solution is to wipe the outsole to clear the dust. After that, traction will be squeaky and grippy again, but only for a few seconds. On clean courts, the traction is really good, but that's to be expected with most kicks on clean floors. On moderately dusty courts, the court grip is still average to just a little above average, but a quick wipe of the outsole will do wonders. For a little perspective, the court grip here is not as good as the Kobe 9 or the Jordan 28, but it's also a little better than the Kyrie 2 and the Kobe 11 EM in my opinion. Now I don't suggest this for hooping on outdoor courts or courts with rough surfaces because the rubber treads are pliable and thin. One last point heel to toe transition. Each step is fluid, like gliding, but it's not really out of this world level. But it's decent, it's good, it just is. First things first, the 4 foot zoom that has 9 chambers. It is nowhere near unlocked zoom. It felt a little responsive at the start, but it eventually became a little plush. It is not the best, but it's also not the worst. Now the forefoot zoom also protrudes a bit, but it doesn't really add or take away from the cushioning. I think the chambers are too small to have enough air that will push back with adequate force after compression. If you've played in the CP39, you know what to expect, more or less. The Phylon midsole offers average impact protection at the heel right from the get-go. No break-in time is needed, no pains as well on hard heel strikes. The midsole here is definitely softer than the Kyrie 2, but not as soft as your standard EVA foam. Now, as for court feel, it is average to just a little below average. To be sure, the shoe does not sit low, but the thickness of the midsole will not completely deprive your feet of court feel.
I went true to size and I suggest you do so as well. Wide footers may go a half size up because it feels like the toe box will be narrow for them. Now the Kurim overlay will hug your feet nicely, although it isn't as form fitting as soft woven upper. In other words, it won't really take the shape of your foot, rather it will rest nicely on the top of your foot with no significant dead space. Also, the Kurim overlay will soften up a bit once broken in. But even so, the fit will not be sloppy. The lacing system will help keep the proper containment of the upper. Keep in mind, however, that you'll experience some discomfort at the tongue area if you lace all the way to the top. Now, as for ventilation, this is not too breathable, but it serves its purpose, which is to say, the heat will help soften up the Kurim overlay as it did in my pair. In a nutshell, the support here primarily depends on the Kurim overlay with the help of the lacing system. The support is adequate for every type of position. Guards, forwards, and centers will find this to be supportive enough. This is not built like a tank though, so if you're looking for whopping support a la LeBron's shoe, you won't find it here. Rather, the overall support setup is built like a flexible cage. Yep, a cage which really befits the name Kurim cage. It's not elastic, but it is flexible. Hard and sharp cuts and similar side-to-side -side movements are well covered and protected. Your feet won't overlap the footbed, which is basically what the shoe offers in terms of support. Be warned though, the out trigger is not too pronounced, but the fairly wide base of the shoe makes up for it. One final thing, this has average range of motion, particularly at the ankle area. But if you lace up all the way to the last eyelet, the range of motion will be restricted. Now some will like it while others will hate it. At the end of the day, it boils down to personal preference. The Jordan Ultrafly offers materials that are pretty basic but nevertheless serve their purpose. The traction will depend on the court, clean to moderately dusty surfaces are fine, on really dusty courts, make sure to keep wiping the outsole. Now the cushioning is not stellar, but it is average and I can live with it. No issues with fit and containment, the support is good enough for every position from quick guards to the biggies. I give the Jordan Ultrafly a grade of B+, which is equivalent to 87 to 89 points out of a maximum 100. That is it for now. If you have questions, requests, and suggestions, sound off in the comment section. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me as well on Instagram for regular updates. You can also hit my website for more articles and performance reviews including the detailed version of this review for the Jordan Ultrafly complete with explanations. Check the links in the description box below. Much love everyone, I wish you all a good day. Thank you, I appreciate the support. As always, peace.